there's a phrase which is much used in the current Brexit debate in the United Kingdom about making Brexit work. The argument runs that uh, however people voted in 2016 for Remain or for Leave, um, now that Britain has left the European Union, now that the transition period is over, it, it's incumbent upon all um, constructive and patriotic people um, to do what they can to make Brexit work. Uh, I think it's a seductive phrase, but it's one which I find misleading, and I want to explain why. There are three particular reasons that lead me to be uneasy, even sceptical about this phrase. Um, the first is that it's perfectly clear, and has been clear since 2016, um, that this government, this Conservative government, is not interested in the views or contributions or analysis of people outside its own circle. Uh, Brexit is a purely Conservative pro um, a project. Um, it arises originally from the civil war of the Conservative Party in the last 10 years. Um, and the way Brexit is defined, the way it unfolds, will be exclusively decided by the, the internal machinations of the Conservative Party. Um, it's not a, a national debate that the party is interested in. It's only its internal conflict. Uh, and indeed, that um, is... Uh, uh, a role of government, if you like. Um, the government um, uh, has been taken over by a Conservative Party, which is dominated by radical Eurosceptics. And as a result, we have um, a deal that in many respects is no different to no deal. Uh, and it will be up to the Conservative Party to decide over the coming years um, exactly how that further develops. There are elements of the deal, the, the trade and cooperation agreement, that could be developed in a more positive, collaborative way. There are others um, that are more, um, uh, more forbidding, um, more, more destructive uh, of good relations, um, and we'll have to see which part of the Conservative Party has the upper hand um, over the coming years. So the thought that um, by criticising or not criticising from outside, by suggesting, by proposing tweaks to the way Brexit works, um, it's going to be possible to help Brexit to work, is, is a delusion in my view. Or my more fundamental point is that I don't think, and many people don't think, that Brexit can be made to work in any event. Uh, Brexit is, is simply a question of choosing the way in which Brexit won't work. Is it going to be more economically damaging or is it going to be more politically incoherent? It's obvious that the government has decided um, that it's going to opt uh, for political purity, that's to say the preservation of a certain notion of sovereignty, um, and damn the economic consequences. Um, I can see that there's a, a logic, that there's a coherence to that. It would be very strange to leave the European Union um, and then re-enter it, as it were, by the back door through being in the customs union and the internal market. In those circumstances, in for a penny, in for a pound, you might just as well be full members of the single market and the customs union. Uh, we're seeing the economic consequences of that, of, of that now. Um, but uh, for the... Labour Party or for the Liberal Democrats or indeed for anyone who is not a Conservative to wish to associate themselves um, with that, um, those consequences seems to me rather odd. Um, during the referendum campaign, um, the negative consequences of Brexit, of course, were concealed. Um, they were concealed and the trade-offs were denied. Now we're seeing the price of that um, and it seems to me a, a very odd thing for people who know that it's Brexit which is causing these consequences to want to deny that in the hope that by um, commenting from the sidelines they'll be able in some way to improve um, the workings of Brexit. Um, Brexit uh, has to work badly by definition uh, and no pious talk about um, making Brexit work can change that. Third question which um, presents itself to my mind is the question a political question. Um, most of those people um, who uh, are against Brexit, who know the disaster and damage that it's going to bring to the country, um, are not politically sympathetic to the Conservative Party. Um, it seems to me odd that people should want to give the government a free ride on the underlying principle of Brexit, simply confining themselves to marginal amendments or proposals in order as I put it um, uh, implausibly, to try and make Brexit work. Um, this is going to be one of the great political debates of the coming years. Um, and the Conservative Party is the party which has brought about Brexit. It's responsible for Brexit. Um, 
saying that others um, should be trying to make it work. Um, it's to take on responsibility for something which can't be made to work, isn't going to be made to work, uh, and which ought politically to be held to accountable. It will be very much to the advantage of the Conservative government if rather than pointing out the fundamental error of Brexit, its political opponents say the problem with Brexit is not Brexit itself, it's the way the Conservative Party is implementing it. Um, that isn't the case, um, and it would be politically a much more powerful message um, from the government's opponents to say so. The question of making Brexit work, of course, is, is part of a wider issue, um, which um, now um, falls to uh, those who are uh, hostile to Brexit, uh, of rejoining in, in what time space is based, in what circumstances. Um, there is a view that it's much too early um, and there's a certain amount of eye rolling and, and cynicism um, which is um, uh, directed towards those who say now is precisely the time to start thinking and talking about rejoining. Once again, I have three reasons why I think rejoining is, is something that ought to be thought about and ought to be talked about um, from the very beginning. The first point is, is that, the, that the damage that Brexit is doing um, is becoming daily more manifest. Um, and it's a, a very, very strange political society in which people who see this disaster unroll, unrolling and unfolding are in some sense um, stopped or prevented from saying what is the cause of these disasters. The cause of these disasters, economic disasters, all the sectors that are now being affected, but most particularly in the cause of the constitutional problems that we're now facing um, is Brexit. Um, and I can see no reason why people shouldn't say so and propose the solution, the only solution, the only realistic solution to these problems, um, which is to reverse Brexit. Uh, I want to focus particularly on Northern Ireland and Scotland. Um, in Scotland, um, the referendum that was won in um, the last independence referendum that was won, um, was won on the basis that it would be a once in a lifetime decision. The logic of that um, uh, undertaking, however, was entirely undermined by Brexit because the basis on which the decision was taken to remain in the United Kingdom was very much um, geared around remaining within the European Union. A great majority of Scots voted to remain in the European Union in 2016. It's perfectly legitimate for them to argue that the terms of the debate, the terms of the contract had been changed. And um, uh, I can't see um, uh, any way out of a very unpleasant set of decisions for the British government over the coming years regarding Scotland. Uh, George Osborne, the former chancellor, uh, had a, an article in the Evening Standard the other day uh, in which he, he talked about the real possibility of Scotland voting for independence. Uh, his um, recipe was that Boris Johnson um, shouldn't in any circumstances allow a referendum to be held. Um, ironically, George Osborne was against the Brexit referendum and I think his advice on the Scottish referendum is a reflection of going into a new war uh, fighting the battles of the old war. Um, I think it will be very difficult for the British government to refuse to hold a referendum indefinitely. And when it does, um, the postponement of the referendum will make it much easier for the Scottish National Party to make the argument in favour of, of independence. Once again, in, in Northern Ireland, um, the uh, unusual and confusing situation which Northern Ireland finds itself in is directly a result of Brexit. Um, Theresa May tried one uh, set of tactics in order to deal with this insoluble problem. Boris Johnson has, proved, has chosen another. Um, but even the DUP, even the most um, hardened unionists, are now beginning to ask themselves, what is the future of Northern Ireland? Is it with the Republic or, or is it with the rest of the United Kingdom? Uh, these are, are, are existential constitutional questions which come about as a result of Brexit. Um, and once again, it would seem to me an entirely dysfunctional political community um, that couldn't face up to those facts and, and, and talk about them. Second point I'd make is that um, the Remainers, the people who wanted to remain in the European Union, found in 2016 um, that they had made a, a gross error over the preceding decade um, in allowing to pass unchecked um, all the lies, all the propaganda about the European Union. Um, they got 
off their horses, their high horses, too late on in the day. They had a, a few months, uh, a, a, a few weeks in some cases, to try and turn around all the propaganda of the preceding years. It, it's up to those people who do want to join the European Union um, as quickly as possible to start um, on the work of education, of, of narrative, formation, as to why we should be in the European Union. The idea that at some point um, there will come uh, a moment of epiphany to the British people when they decide in their great majority, we want to go back to the European Union, um, is, is a, a, an idle one. Um, it's one that um, has no role for leadership of opinion and education of opinion. Um, no case was ever made stronger by not being articulated publicly. It creates a, an impression of, um, uh, of underhandedness, of, um, of reserve, but even of deceit. Um, if you don't put your cards on the table, uh, I think this is something we can learn from our, our UKIP rivals. Um, they were never backward in coming forward with their view that Britain should leave the European Union. Uh, and originally, this was a, a minority view, this was a fringe view. Um, if we want to turn round public opinion, um, then we, it's got to be, uh, a start has got to be made sooner rather than later. Um, uh, there used to be a criticism in my previous office, the Foreign Office, um, that um, there are only two pieces of advice from the Foreign Office. It's too early to do anything or it's too late to do anything. And we mustn't find ourselves in the same position. Um, if in doubt, um, it's always better to start early rather than to, to postpone um, initiatives which may never get taken eventually. So I think that um, the case for rejoining is one that has to be made uh, as soon as possible by those who believe in it. Um, the final point I'd like to make is that opinion within the United Kingdom can change very quickly. Uh, I find it quite extraordinary that uh, with um, four years of negotiations after the referendum, um, it's still the case that there's probably a majority of people, a bare majority of people, who would like to be in the European Union. Um, people have not reconciled themselves to the idea of, of leaving the European Union. Uh, and if there were political and uh, intellectual leadership um, showing them why and how it might be possible to leave the European Union, um, then to rejoin the European Union, um, then I think that that's a, a message which would have a, a lot of resonance. Um, we're seeing um, economically, politically, constitutionally, the downsides of Brexit. Um, I find it, it, it impossible to believe that there won't be a, a major change of public opinion, uh, which could lead to a substantial majority in favour of rejoining in the course of, of the next two years. And that's just a, a movement that needs canalizing um, and needs focusing. Um, it's not going to come to be politically significant of, of itself. Who would have thought that 10 years after the last um, um, victory of, of Tony Blair, um, we'd be having a, a referendum um, in which we left the European Union? Who would have thought that six years after David Cameron came to power saying that he wanted the Conservative Party to stop banging on about Europe, we'd have a referendum which he lost. Um, things can change very quickly. Um, and I think that uh, there are good arguments about rejoin um, that need to be made and will have great resonance um, with the British public over the coming years. One point that's sometimes made is that uh, our European colleagues wouldn't want to have us back. Uh, and I can understand that they probably wouldn't want to have the um, present British government, the present British political system, if you like, um, back as a destabilizing factor within the European Union. Um, but I think it's wrong to assume um, that in 10 years time, which might be the sort of time frame for, for rejoining, um, the United Kingdom is going to be the same United Kingdom politically um, as, as it is now. There's very much a, an air, it seems to me, of a political system uh, which is creaking um, of a party system um, that reflects the, the prejudices and events and interests of the 20th century, not of the 21st century. Um, I can well believe that when we get to the end of this decade, the United Kingdom will be a, a, a political system um, which is much more diverse, much more decentralized with a different electoral system uh, with a more stable constitutional foundation. And that's very much than the, um, the sort of um, country that would find it easier to continue uh, in stable membership uh, of the European Union and reassure um, our colleagues uh, that we weren't simply going to be wreckers. Um, Winston Churchill had a, a, a definition of an, a, an obsessive, of a fanatic, uh, somebody who spent so much time 
trying to get a goal, um, that when he got the goal, he'd forgotten why he wanted it in the first place. Um, I think that it'll become clearer and clearer as the months and years go by um, that Brexit was indeed such an exercise in fanaticism. Um, when we have uh, the rejoin campaign, uh, I suggest a, a slogan, um, which will be take back control to. Uh, it will be take back control from the Brexit fanatics. Um, and I think that taking back control from the Brexit fanatics is a much more attractive proposition than taking back control, which we never lost anyway, from our closest um, neighbours, friends, allies in Europe.